guys, it's me again. Um, I am coming to you live on Tuesday at one o'clock as per usual. It is turning into a great day here in Portland, Oregon, but we're trying to keep it happy. Um, so today's question is about driveway easements. And this is going to be interesting for some of you who might not be in Portland proper. Um, it's really going to depend on where you actually are. Um, our city was, well, it was built before automobiles were really the rage like they are now. And so a lot of people didn't even have garages or the garages that they had were carriage houses for the horses and the carriage, as you would imagine. So in the 50s and in the 20s, when they started, well, in the 50s, when we started getting more and more cars and people needed a garage for their cars, they solve the problem oftentimes by splitting the driveway. So this is going to be very complicated to explain without a visual, but let me try and do it. Um, let's imagine that my hand is a driveway and here's the driveway and this is your house and this is your neighbor's house. Now the driveway is normally always on one person or the other person's property per se. And then you might see these and you'll see, oh, the driveway kind of veers onto the other house. And then that, it, that group side of the garage is obviously on that person's property. But the driveway itself is kind of split between the two properties or clearly on one of the house's properties. So what usually happened, especially way back in the day, so let me put it this way. If you did this today, if you try to build the house and do a driveway easement, you would have um, a maintenance agreement between both parties that says when we're going to replace the driveway, who's going to pay for it, how it's going to be done, um, all of that. So there's no question. So if you sell the property, the next person and the next person and the next person that owns it is able to understand what was intended and they have a rule book to follow so that they don't get in a fight with their neighbor. Back in the day, we didn't really do that. And so you might not have anything or you might have just literally three sentences um, on, an, on a deed restriction or an easement on your deed that says, hey, you're sharing three and a half feet of your land with your next door neighbor to the west. Literally just read one today that said that. Um, no agreement as to how it's maintained. Um, no agreement as to who uses it. The way I often see this become a problem is when someone has been parking in it, which happens often because they think it's their driveway, instead of driving through it to their garage, veering into their garage and parking into their garage. Um, this obviously becomes a point of contention because especially if you're the new neighbor that buys the new house, um, you have an expectation to be able to drive to your garage and your neighbor's like, no, I've been parking here for 20 years. Um, so that is why it's an issue, especially if you're a buyer. On the seller side, obviously, you have probably arranged something with your neighbor and it might not be what's actually on your deed. It might be, hey, neighbor, I'm never here on Tuesday nights. You can park there. On Thursday nights, it's my night. And I've seen a lot of people do this. But the reality is you as a seller assume that that's the way it's always going to be. But when you go to sell your property, it's going to be a problem because there's nothing in there that's actually a written agreement that says, hey, I get Tuesday night's driveway parking. So normally if you see a driveway easement, it means you have to pass through it. You cannot park in it. Um, it is only a means to get to somewhere else. Um, and there's easements for all kinds of things, guys. So it's something that you definitely want to pay attention to. And as your agent, it's something we um, look for very closely and talk to you about because it's something you're going to have to deal with if you're living in that house. Anyways, have a wonderful Tuesday. I hope you enjoy what little we have left of sunshine. And we will see you soon. Take care.